Yeah, hi, welcome everyone to today's uh, session as a part of our podcast uh, series from IQF on AI, ML, and data science applications in finance. So in our earlier episodes, we have discussed about the various aspects already. Uh, first of all, what difference between AI, ML, and data science, then the career trajectories, the roles and responsibilities. We have also uh, talked about data science in finance. So now uh, the talk is on, uh, this, this particular episode is on AI and ML particularly applications in finance. So for today's talk, uh, we again have been joined by Sanjay, Sanjay Bhatia, so, uh, who as I have earlier also introduced, just to mention it again, Sanjay has more than uh, 16 plus years of ex mainstay experience in risk management working across various uh, international banks and currently is working as a director uh, at UBS in the risk management team uh, where he's using machine learning and uh, uh, machine learning in data so I have in, in, in risk management. So we would like to hear from him his thoughts on uh, applications of AI and ML in finance. So. Let's uh, uh, hit the nail in the beginning itself, right? So uh, just for the audience, what are the uh, precise application areas of AI and ML in finance? Yeah, Nitish, thanks for having me here again. And, You're always uh, welcome. Uh, yeah, and definitely AI, ML is uh, not just a buzzword, is a reality, and we need to discuss it at an application level, which is a good endeavor from Absolutely. IQF that they have brought down it to an application level. Right. So uh, the application of, uh, you know, AI ML for finance, uh, you know, transcends different, uh, you know, topics like uh, the risk management. Right. Right. Treasury. Right. Right. Your trading. Right. Right. And uh, the quantitative finance or financial engineering field. Correct. Right. As well as certain other topics which are revolving around it, like fraud risk, which we generally call non financial risk, so right. to say, some other topics, compliance risk, fraud risk, maybe anti money laundering risk, and all of that, even climate risk now, which is cutting across a cross wide topic. Correct. Right? As well as some of the new, uh, newly found application of uh, AIML is uh, very concentrated on doing the stress testing and in scenario analysis, right. which is an enterprise-wide uh, area, right? Uh, which is a cross-risk topic, right? Correct. right? So enterprise-wide area where you build scenarios to check vulnerabilities and to shock various factors and, uh, you know, re-assess uh, your portfolio risk Correct. by, by you know, presenting a playbook, a portfolio playbook to different shocks. Right. Right. So that's also a new area. But specifically, if you want to ask what's new happening there, right? Because uh, it's one thing having this buzzword that we are using AI, ML in these areas, but what Correct. is the value add? Right, right, absolutely. Right. So the value add is that in each of these uh, respective areas, the model built out time, right? <clears throat> Which used to be from maybe of uh, you know 18 months to somewhere around two years okay has been cut down to six months oh wow so it means that uh, for real-time analytics which is the need of the hour correct we are producing more models we are producing more analytical insights and uh, these models are allowing us to experiment with a, a lot right so the right. time is not wasted in building the model but you have ample of time if you achieve that model building process in six months you right. have ample of time to experiment it with different data sets okay. and also to validate it test it out on in sample out of the sample out of in time out of the time all different kind of samples right right that's where the real insights are going to come from whether the model is reliable for its use in production or not right okay <clears throat> i mean that's Oh, good to hear. But again, uh, one uh, follow-up question that then comes to my mind is like, uh, with more and more use of like uh, machine learning or data science-based models in finance, uh, how do you see it? I mean, will it uh, will these models uh, replace the traditional uh, statistical or quant models that we have been using for last so many years, or this will be like an augmentation of the ex existing models? How do you see it? Okay. 
so i would say that it uh, the table which will change right uh, so today ai ml where it is sitting is that it is being sitting as a benchmark model or a challenger model right and uh, we, the statistical model is regarded as the champion model because we have been using it for yeah, ages correct right now when the tables will turn tomorrow as ai ml will start performing over and above for that it has to perform over and above over a, you know a re- decent period or reasonable period long right. length of time the the ai ml will become uh, the champion and this traditional model will become the challenger sort of a benchmark model okay right so that's what i foresee personally i anticipate uh, that how it is going to pan out right. right but in many cases where there are very strict regulatory guidelines Correct. they will still keep on holding up the guns to having this uh, champion as being a statistical model and the reason is that uh, if a explainable ai right and some of the theories where we were using a game theory right. to explain the output of this black box okay. to various stakeholders if that area of research or that area would not evolve then definitely will be it will be a protracted kind of a development where in some cases ai ml will take over as being a champion model in while in other cases it will still be a challenger model okay <coughs> very well explained uh another follow up question is like 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 i mean in the last uh, discussion where we were having on data science applications right so there you mentioned that uh, uh, for somebody who is trying to enter into the data science industry uh, of course the core knowledge area remains the same but again you need to be uh, need to train yourself a little differently if you want to uh, work as a data scientist in finance So similarly do you think that i mean when you're working in like machine learning application areas in finance so same kind of uh, structured learning is also needed in this case as absolutely, well absolutely absolutely there is no second thought or doubt about it right uh, come what may uh, generally uh, the lack of depth in the market okay. in the education space who are imparting the education they are doing good work right, right. but the point is this that they themselves are not specialized right right makes them to generalize right make them leave an impression on everyone that these skills are generalized right right but these skills are not generalized okay right? it's not just a technology or an it right where it is labeled as a technology or, not, or an it ai ml as a technology or it uh, uh, you know offering could be you know generic right right but it's uh, the algorithmic development the model development part of it is different from one Absolutely. area to another area so is the case with uh, finance right and uh, the key distinctive uh, you know you know uh, attributes uh, in finance which make somebody to learn the domain application right right are that finance data we talk, we already talked about data differences but now finance problem statement okay. are really very high dimensional problem statement okay high dimensional problem statements are those which are generally having a lot of variables a lot of variables all right and you need that model which could not restrict taking variables into the model right like statistical model generally restrict that there is a you know Uh, multi collinearity and you should not take the more than these models right uh, these these variables in the model here machine learning doesn't restrict that okay. it has the capability like neural network has the capability of take taking hundreds of variables into your model okay and then create a, a modeling formulation out of it right so that high dimensional uh, character or nature of the financial problems right uh you know vis a vis the uh, not so high dimensional nature of other problems non financial or other industry problems right make financial domain quite different right from other domains understood all right okay so i mean so with that thought actually like again uh, i mean we would uh, end uh, this episode again uh, thanks so much for that uh, wonderful explanation as always uh, so i hope uh, so the to the audience uh, you got a fair bit of idea about uh, this particular topic ai and ml application in finance and uh, as a part of our uh, podcast series on ai ml applications in finance we will keep having 
discussions on various uh, important aspects and topics. So keep uh, watching this space for uh, more follow-up uh, episodes in this podcast series. See you in the next podcast.